Hello, I am David D. Hilster, a critical thinker, dissident scientist, and I'm here to tell you the truth about science. Something your university professors won't tell you, the mass media won't tell you, and certainly those science evangelists won't tell you. Well, I look at the headlines now and then, and of course, there's always something going on in the world of physics. And of course, when they come up with a new particle, I'm right on top of it because, hey, another advancement in particle physics. You know, that system that is broken, that let many of us, including Dr. Alexander Unsker, myself, and many others want to throw away. Well, here is another particle in that zoo of particles. And as a critical thinker, my goal is to, you're going to probably maybe already re read this, but I want to point some things out that I learned from other critical thinkers of how to read these things and read between the lines. And of course, we'll start out here with the title, Particle Physics, What's an Otteron? And Did CERN Just Reveal Its Existence? Uh, Otteron, I love the I love the name. Quarks, Otterons. Hey, you got to name them fancy. Why? Because this is marketing. It has nothing to do with science. You know, we don't want to name it after a person or something that really happened, something that that means something. We're going to name it something that's catchy. This is, this is you got to sell it. So, Otteron. Hey, man, that sounds so cool. Let's take a look at it and see where we can start picking this thing apart and seeing what the reality of particle physics really is. And we're going to get it right in the very first first sentence uh, and that is a team of more than 100 researchers working at the Large Hadron Collider in Europe may have just witnessed the first and direct evidence of a theoretical particle called an otteron. The first problem is this 100 researchers. What profession do you have researchers that work together in groups of a hundred? Now, if you think about it, it's like, well, that's just lots of people. They're all working on it. Maybe all around the world we send the data. And, you know, uh, yes, but that's not where it's really happening. What's really happening is, I learned this from Dr. Karazani when the top quark was discovered in the early 1990s. Discovered. They got together uh, a bunch of uh, almost a thousand, literally almost a thousand physicists. Part of, they got together and they said, this is how we're going to find it because we can't find it. So we're going to have to lay out the map and, and, and this is it. Blah, 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 blah. This is how we're going to find it. And guess what? Six months, or fa six months later, they found it. And how many people were on that paper? You know how many researchers? Over 900. Now, do you think they all got together and wrote this together? No. Why does this happen? Why are there 100 researchers? Because a particle is prestige. It's ego. It's being worshipped by your underlings, your grad students, your other teachers. It is your promotion. It is your raise. Why? Because I worked on the team that discovered a new particle. And I can go back to Podunk University in the physics department and say, I worked on this team. I'm part of history. And I need a raise. I need to be tenured. That's what it's about. It's not a hundred researchers working on it. Of course they're going to say it and they're going to make you know platitudes to us and all that. But that's what's really going on. I'm telling you, I'm teaching you how to read these things. And of course, you go down here and you're going to see some other funny stuff. Red flags everywhere. Um, the Adoran is already a red flag. Adoran, was it named after Otter? No, I don't think so. It's probably an odd idea, so they just named it that way. And Adoran, in theory, is a subatomic quasi particle, <laughs> meaning something that behaves enough like a particle to be considered one. Come on, guys, how many red flags do you need here? I mean, this is just not the way people normally do science. This is like mythical stuff. This is like reading uh, 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 Harry Potter. This is like reading something that someone made up, and it makes sound so, it sounds so emotional, doesn't it? The quasi-particle that behaves sort of like a particle, but just enough to be considered a particle. But, you know, he was at a party and there were a lot of people who really didn't consider him a particle. Maybe he has to go to school more to be... Con All right, that's fine. It's theorized back in 1973. So what they're doing is they're going back and saying, we've been looking this at this for decades. And that's what they have been saying. Another, let's look at some more further down. The large, the LHC, the Large Hadron Collider, the world's leading <laughs> accelerator. You know, here's some more. 
critical thinking going on here the leading accelerator it used to be the most powerful and the best accelerator well what turned out is a lot of things that they're doing there can actually be done in smaller accelerators real small accelerators in fact and people are saying uh uh hello uh, a large hadron collider uh we don't need a 50 mile 50 mile 50 kilometer uh, radius or however big it is uh, don't quote me i don't care about the the numbers it doesn't matter uh it's huge and billions of dollars spent on this to do this oh uh, we can do it in our particle accelerator or in our little lab uh, for thousands of dollars i'm exaggerating a little but that's why they're saying a lead the world's leading accelerator so they're they're selling this literally why do they have to say that How, what's that mean leading accelerator leading what is there a race is there accelerator ranking that comes out every year like the football rankings come on come on so you can see that to to get the adron cern research starts with hadrons and so you get some background that hadrons are protons and neutrons and of course hadrons are made up of smaller cl uh, clusters of quarks Blah, 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 blah. And so we're going on, and it says the researchers collide those particles, and they talk about they only come in even numbers, and then if they have lots and lots and higher numbers of collision to higher energies, they can record the first observations of collisions by moving, moving in groups of odd numbers. Now, think about it. You're, you're supposed to sort of somehow come up with a system in your mind. They're supposed to be explaining something that means something. Go and watch... Jeff Yee's uh, videos on his model. It's pretty darn clear. And yes, it's, 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 it's waves and stuff, and there's some equations, but it's, some, it's real physicality to this thing, right or wrong. It's real physicality. It's much, much simpler than this model. This one, they're just talking in nebulous terms. They always talk in nebulous terms because they don't know. They don't know what, how quarks are. They always picture them as round balls all round balls together. And are they? They have no idea. So they're talking about odd numbers and even numbers. And the other thing is to higher number of collisions at higher energy. That, of course, is gold. Why? Because if you collide things long enough, it, you're going to get stuff and you're going to see things you want to see. You're going to see any, any signal you're going to want to see. What is a signal? Anyway? How do they know this is a signal? Uh, you want to read about that? Read Alexander Unsiger. So we go down and it talks about protons being like semi-trucks. And of course, you know, they carry semi-trucks and then of course they collide and the semi-trucks are still together, but things are now flown out of it. That's what they say. And they also, new cars produce. Energy is transformed into matter. Of course, what that really means, again, is totally nebulous if they don't have a physical model. Okay, but here we get to the last part here, which of course is more red flags. Because of, of the understandably convoluted nature of the subject, as an experiment spokesman put it, this is an experiment spokesman saying it's understandably, understandably convolu convoluted nature. It's got to understand, it's con convoluted. Uh, and they said, these results are far from definite. But aside from the excitement of potentially discovering something, something scientists have been chasing for decades, this kind of kind of research of ultra-fast particle detectors could have implications for astrophysics, potentially for medicine, and even distillation of water according to the universe. So what you have here is justification for what they're doing. They got to do this. They, you think they have any idea really of how these things are? They just sort of think, well, you know, it could be this. So we're going to justify it for this. And we're going to talk about that. Thing. But again, this is the way they do things. Number one, they get things from a long time ago that they can't find. So they go digging the, around the root and somebody, hey, somebody's an Adoran, and this is an even Aran, and this was a, I don't even, maybe it comes from odd, the odd number, because they talk about odd and even, or maybe it's odd because it's just strange. But you know, it's convoluted. It's understandably convoluted in nature by the subject, of the subject. Look at that. How many red flags do you have to have? But what they do after that what you're going to find, I mark my words, in the near future, within a year or whatever, they will find this. It will no longer be convoluted. It will be fact. It will be, it, let's do it. It will be fact. Oh, man. Earthquake. So, again, I've learned this from my uh, Dr. Karazani, who taught me about, notice how many people are on those 
research papers. Notice how many people are listed, 100 people. Thank you very much. I hang out with some of the most brilliant minds outside of science because I love science and being around brilliant and critical thinkers is the way you learn. And so remember what I say and what anybody else says. Don't take this on faith. Stay critical. Stay thinking. I'm Dave D. Hilster. I am your science therapist. Ciao for now.